just like that. I used to drive a little ass discreet van just like this. And just, I, come on, I mounted fucking bars back there. It was a good cash flow business. That's where I, that's what I feel like I'm lacking now. If I were to like look at my situation at the moment, I don't have a cash flowing business right now. And that's a weakness of mine. Like in a way I feel like, I feel, I'm feeling like hungry to get back in the game because I'm running a fund, but that's not the same. I'm, you know, I'm investing in businesses. I'm building a business around talking about business. I'm gonna, probably gonna drop a book. I'm doing all the things, but it's been a little while since I've like start, I'm buying real estate. So I'm in business, but it's been a while since I've started an operating company and I'm getting the itch to like do something again. I just don't know what it's gonna be because now that I know how hard this shit is, I'm like a little bit more careful about what I choose to get into. If, does that make sense? It's like before, it didn't take that much for me to get into something. I'd be like, oh, all right, bet, what are we doing? But now, I, it's almost like I have a little PTSD. I have a little bit of like, you know, I have battle scars. I'm like battle scarred pretty much. I'm like, all right, I know that when you start a company, it's like the hardest thing you'll ever have to do in your life. So if that's the case, I'm waiting for something I feel really strongly about before I jump in again, if that makes sense. Yeah, when I was doorman and my, the, you know, my mentor was like, yo, try this business out, this dry clean shit. I was like, all right. Now that I know more, I'm waiting. I'm like constantly actually thinking about like, yo, what's that opportunity? Like, what's that thing that I'm gonna do next? We'll see. Oof, busy day today. Uh, we just drove in to the city, um, kicking off the day. We're jumping back into the studio, shooting another episode of Chop It Up. It's been a, maybe a few weeks since I've done that, so excited to get back in the studio. Immediately heading over to the airport and catching a flight to Pittsburgh for a talk tonight um, uh, that I'm doing with Square. Should be a great time. I'm doing a little bit of a keynote and also moderating a panel. It's gonna be a crazy week. We're then flying back immediately the next day and we have back to back to back meetings and dinners and all kinds of stuff. So, should be an action packed one. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Oh, I think about like vlogging and what we do I realize like it's an unnatural thing that's why people are resistant naturally but at the same time people enjoy consuming the product <laughs> so that's an interesting thing about human nature you judge people when you see them doing it but then you love watching it interesting to Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, I've had a very rocky commute today, but it's part of the process. It's gonna be a fun event. T tonight I'm speaking at um, Square, an event that Square is hosting um, at the Ace Hotel. Should be a lot of fun meeting with some of the kind of the local entrepreneurs from the area. This is also a new city for me. Beautiful city, beautiful city, wow. I've heard great things about Pittsburgh, but I haven't actually been. Part of also why I love the speaking business, by the way, you just get to travel to cities that you probably just, you know, wouldn't have a reason to go to. Maybe eh, that's not the way to put it, but I've just, I've been to places that I wouldn't have gone as a destination. I wouldn't have thought to go as a destination. And when you go, 
you meet the people, you see this, you know, the place. I mean, this is beautiful, isn't it? All kinds of, um, remember the live audio is always on, so you could. Check, check, levels, levels. Can you guys make some noise for it? Just be my first time at Pittsburgh. Yes, I love that. Fun fact though, your did I hear your? Look at the Bronx over here. I uh, I could tell I was gonna love the city right when I landed at the airport. I judge cities by the airport. I fucking love your guys' airport. It's solid. This whole idea that you can literally think something up. And if you put some action to it on the flip side of that idea, like it could be a physical reality. And I had just didn't grow up around that. So I just, it blew my mind when I, I almost like caught a glimpse of the other side of the matrix, if you will. Like there was a glitch when I realized like, oh shit, like your value could be determined by your direct input. Like input equals output. Cause no matter how much I opened that door, like I wasn't going to get paid anymore. But there is this world where, and you guys know, what you put in, you can get out. I can recall several times reading about venture-funded competitors. I mean, fat companies that were raising tens of millions of dollars. Homejoy raised 38 million from Google Ventures, and Washio raised money from Ashton Kutcher. I was like, yo, I'm gonna compete against Ashton Kutcher. And like, all these people raising money, and I made a fatal mistake. I started playing their game. And the moment you play someone else's game, you lose. I started trying to go toe to toe with these enormous companies that by the way, were running at a loss and were subsidizing their operations with outside money. I didn't know that. And I'm over here like, dude, how are they possibly charging this amount of money? Like I just don't understand and I would reduce my price and they would go down and I would go down. It was just like the sketchy race to the bottom and at some point I tapped out. I was like, dude, I can't run my business this way. And so I had to lean into whatever it was that I felt I could bring to the table. It definitely wasn't venture money. Now I know how to raise money. Now I'm on the different side. Now I'm, I'm a VC. If I ever wanted to start a company, I know the type of speak that gets investors all excited. By the way, it's all a bunch of intangibles. It's all like how you say words. I've learned you don't say finance, you say finance, right? There's like, like seriously, there's like, and I'll teach you all of them. There's like a certain amount of buzzwords that if you learn how to say them and, and, and you learn the art of storytelling and inspiring confidence in an investor, you can secure the bag. But now going back, that was a very valuable experience for me because you know, I grinded that business out. There were some days where I woke up bleeding from my nose, literally, because I was so stressed that I wasn't gonna make payroll. There were days when I was laughing to the bank. There were days when, you know, you had these incredible highs and lows, sometimes in the same day. Um, you know, I introduced the technology component at some time. I was like, all right, cool. You know, what's that process? of introducing technology. You know, I don't know how many of you guys have, you know, let's build an app, right? It's like incredibly expensive. You go to the big dev shops, they charge you 300 grand, so then you can't do that. So then you could either pay 10 grand for a cheap app or try and build it yourself. So then you go and you build it yourself and you bring on a homie and you, you go through all the pains. Man, we've been there. All the pains of developing a product, bringing it to market, branding. I've spent a lot of money on stupid stuff that didn't work and ultimately, um, ultimately I learned that because of this perception that a lot of people crush it their first time in business I was placing a very unrealistic pressure on myself to learn everything I ever wanted to learn from my first business and then I realized dude if you're really committed to this game like if you're really a founder you're in the ship your whole life 
your whole life. Learn from your first business what your first business has to teach you. I learned from that first business how to sell. I could sell you an old business card that I have in my wallet right now, right? That's what that business taught me. And I place, again, all this pressure on myself, like, yo, how am I gonna get this money? How am I gonna you know, scale a product to millions? Like, I just didn't know that that venture was specifically well-equipped to teach me certain skills. And those skills stay with you. And then my second venture, I learned how, I, I then started an incubator. I learned how to work with several companies at once and I developed a more macro perspective. And now my third company, um, we're running a fund. It's a $25 million fund and we invest specifically in, in women and minority owned businesses. And now I'm lear I've learned how to operate even more macro. But again, the, the stuff that I know now that took me eight, nine, 10 years to learn, I had that pressure on myself to learn that from day one. Like how unrealistic does that sound? And by the way, I got a text from one of my former employees and he told me that that company that we were in that price war with, they went out of business and I, I couldn't help, like that was a moment for me, I actually sat back and I thought, wow, like the, the gravitas of that lesson sunk in because here I was trying to compete with someone that I didn't even know was slowly going out of business, but they didn't look like they were. On the outside, they looked like they were popping, they had the best marketing, we were always trying to copy their website. I mean, guys, guys, I was a guy prank calling them and just trying to get info on like how they do stuff. Like that's how obsessed we became with following this competitor that ultimately ended up going out of business and we ended up getting acquired. Like that, it gives me chills to this day because this whole game for me has been understanding that it's about figuring out what you specifically do well and what your team does well. And if you're not a tech team, then don't front like you're a tech team. If you're a team that over indexes because you have skills in the arts, then that's what you lean into. And that's what you make part of your narrative and your branding. You know, if, you have, if you're a distiller, because that's part of your DNA, that's what you do. If you're a marketer, that's what you do. If you're none of those, but you're a good writer, do you get the point here? It's like, this game, there's a lot of talk about product market fit. Like, is this the right product for the right market? But at Harlem Capital, we look at founder product fit. Like, is this the right person to tackle this business? And that doesn't get talked about nearly enough. Um, so, so anyway, that is just some kind of broad strokes context. There's a lot there to unpack, but I'm going to unpack more of this with the help of my, uh, with our esteemed panelists. I, I specifically went with that tone to let you guys know that whatever doubts you're feeling about yourself and your business are 100% natural. Like. When I was getting started, I told my mentor, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm kind of scared. And he's like, bro, if you weren't, you'd either be crazy or dumb and you're neither. So it's part of it, it's part of it.